Folks, it's a beautiful hot day here in northeast Scotland at Tappanoff Farm. We seem to have a day of record temperatures across the country. Bit of a hot one for our pre-harvest, but we're um, doing what we can to get the non-perishables picked today, Thursday, and then tomorrow on Friday we'll um, pick things like salads and the rest of the leafy greens that really need to be kept fresh just a couple of hours before delivery. We're starting off the day in the market garden. And before we do any harvesting, we're just going through the beds, taking out any bolting vegetables that we can feed to the goats or the hens. The roses in the chard at the moment, just removing some of the bolting chard and taking that to the goats. And um, I'm actually gonna get up and start working on uh, removing an old salad bed so that we can get that prepared again and ready to sow for another succession of salads. It's so great to see the garden coming along now. I think this um, perfect mixture of sun and rain has really helped us and things are finally starting to produce um, like we need them to. Before we take this opportunity to do a market garden update tour as well today at some point. So maybe when it cools down a bit in the evening after we've harvested. With the we'll show you guys what's happening in the market garden at this time of year here in Scotland and just give you an update of how things are going for us. Fleeting red colors in the night In the night Pages of this book are folded at the edge Underline the words that we've already Hi! <laughs> so we are hanging out in our pee tunnel right now. Uh, <laughs> so here we are in the Monge 2 tunnel, the pee cave. <laughs> it's one of the coolest places in the market garden right now. We are just avoiding cool. the heat. It's very yeah. humid. Um, we're sort of waiting for thunder to come any minute. Yep. Uh, but it's very nice. So. I'll just give you a shot of what we're looking at right now, what's above us. So you can see how nice and shady it is in here. Mm. Got a purple variety of Monge 2, the Blau Shocker. So yeah, we're just taking a quick rest before we get started and we're going to do the broad beans, which are conveniently right here next to me. Um, so that'll be our first harvest this season. We're quite excited about that. Um, I actually personally love broad beans. I think they're very versatile. Me too. And you do as well, mm -hmm. yeah. They're not they're not one of the most loved bean, but um, we think they're great. We get a good crop off of them. And we're just gonna be picking the biggest ones from the bottom of the plant uh, this week. And so we should get another really good crop next week as well. So we're gonna just pick all the veg that we need for tomorrow's veg box. And um, we'll film, film the harvest. Mm -hmm. We might recap towards the end of the vlog, give you a bit of a tour around the garden and splice all this together, all today's harvest, so you can see another day 
of harvesting at Tapanoth. Okay, so it's the end of the day and we've harvested half of the stuff for our veg box and the leafy greens are left to do tomorrow morning. But we just thought we'd spend a bit of our early evening just doing a quick tour around the market garden, focusing on some things that uh, we feel have worked well and some things that have been a bit difficult this season just to bring you up to date with everything. So we'll start here in the polytunnel. Behind me, uh, we have our courgette. Down here, we have our first succession of the courgette. These again were planted a bit later because we were trying to make our boxes earlier this season. So we had some early crops in the whole polytunnel, which pushed everything a bit later. So these went in the ground just over a month ago and they're doing quite well. We had some end rot. We've mentioned this in some previous videos, been feeding them with various natural organic things we can think of. This is Floridor. It's a yellow round variety. So we're trying something new this season. Yellow varieties seem to tend to get end rot a little bit more for some reason, but uh, they're pulling through and we've already put them in one box. So that's this first one. The second one only just went in, so really quite late, but luckily this is the Cocazelle, which we've grown a lot before. It's a really good rounder, kind of green stripey courgette. Let's move on to the tomatoes. behind me here are a huge jungle of one of our varieties of tomatoes. Uh, we planted these a really long time ago actually, I think in late February we had a really hot spell. We were worried about them but they've done really well, especially this variety here, the Aurora. They're both bush varieties and we've uh, just got these uh, ropes here that are pinned in at the base of each plant and tied to a top support rope. Sporadically we train them around these just to kind of keep them from falling over. They've got plenty of fruit on them. These ones haven't quite ripened yet, uh, but the uh, later tomatoes that had a few more troubles, but they're actually ripe and we've been harvesting from them for a while. So I'll just take you over there. These are the later. You can see they look a bit worse for wear. They started off getting uh, green fly. We treated them for this with a lot of different things, including neem and garlic, and, and it did seem to work in the end, which was great. We also, I think, had a bit of blight, but the plus side is we're get actually getting some really beautiful tomatoes off of these. Um, we haven't been able to harvest enough in a short time to put in the boxes yet but they keep producing, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll be putting them in, and hopefully with a side of basil in the veg box, so I'll just take you over there now. This is our basil. It's actually finally doing really well. It sat there for quite a while because it was quite cold, but hopefully next week we'll be putting this in the box. It smells amazing. We've had some slug issues around the back. Tried like beer traps and eggshells and things. It seems to have made some sort of a difference because they have grown up now. And in between these, we've got some jalapenos, which again, sat there for a really long time. They were planted almost around the same time as the tomatoes and have only just really started to grow. So fingers crossed we'll be getting a crop off of these. We'll see it's a new crop for us this season. So these two beds on either side of me here, are both quite recently been planted in here. I don't know if you remember, but we had the Choggia beets that we put in some of our earliest boxes. We pulled them out and this is a dwarf French bean, a green bean. Um, they're really lovely, they're really highly productive. And the great thing about a dwarf bean, French bean, is that you don't need to support it. So these should only grow a little bit taller than this and then they'll start producing um, some really nice, long, thin green beans. To my left here are some fennel. These were meant to go in the ground a really long time ago. And so they've been sitting there in their seed trays, looking quite sad for themselves as we tried to wait for the carrots, the early carrots that were in here to finally get to size, which took, I mean, it was at least a month late. Fingers crossed they do okay. I feel positive about it. Okay, should we head out the polytunnel? Let's go. I don't wobble with my tiger. Classic volunteer potatoes. So these two plots behind me here are the carrot and beetroot plots. James just harvested the beets from this bed here 
Uh, these were some leftover choggia beets from the planting in the polytunnel a long time ago. And to be honest, they weren't so great, I think, because they were just the leftovers. Um, but the others are all looking really healthy. The main varieties that we grow are Cylindra and Alvro Mono. And Alvro Mono are great because they're monogerm, so you don't have to pull them apart when you plant the modules in because monogerm meaning that just one beetroot comes from each seed. So they're great. We have our carrot plot here. Um, we need to do a bit of weeding. We're a little bit behind with that, <laughs> but you've got to forgive us. Um, and then this is the uh, parsnip plot. So we haven't grown parsnips for the blo blocks. We haven't grown parsnips for the box before. Um, and we've got more beets and carrots over there. So this is our chamomile, I mean, onion plot. We had some chamomile in here last year. Jane's already mentioned this. It's self-seeded. We knew it would happen. It actually has been okay. The onions seem to be really healthy. So maybe that's a new kind of companion planting that we didn't know about. So these are the permaculture tree rows of which we have two currently in full swing in the market garden. Um, we've got one more that we uh, started mulching up at the top of the market garden. They're doing really well. This is like the best part of our market garden is the forest garden. So not the market garden, but um, they're really great. We'll definitely talk about these more in depth in another video. Behind me here is one of our brassica plots, one of our two brassica plots uh, this season. Um, we have some cauliflower just behind me here. They're protected with a really fine mesh because of the cabbage root fly that we got this season. That wasn't great because we got that last year and we tried collars and everything, but we still got it back. So the fine mesh is just to protect from a whole new generation of them that might um, impact these uh, newer planted cauliflower. So we've got cauliflower here and these are calabrese. You can see there's some patchiness because of the cabbage root maggot that we got but luckily most of them survived so that's great we actually sprayed a lot of uh, garlic spray on these I think that made an effect oh <laughs> that's just some of the willow uh, wind break windbreak. that we have <laughs> this is a very sad place the earlier cauliflower uh, succession that we planted as you can see a lot of them have matured too early and that's because they were really stressed the root maggot eats the roots, so it means that they are not able to uptake the nutrients and the water that they need to, and so they become stressed, and we've just got lots of small, very sad looking cauliflower. We will probably do the job of eating these, but unfortunately these ones won't make it into the box, which is a bit sad, but onwards and upwards. So, okay, so this here, um, I was harvesting earlier. our first ever harvest of this new variety. It's Broccoli Sante F1. I'm quite happy with it so far. I've just been taste testing it, which is very important. It's a sprouting broccoli, basically, but a short season one, so you don't have to have sown it the year before. So we just sowed this um, when we were sowing our other brassica crops in the spring, and it's just about ready now. We had some difficulty with it. It was a bit slow start, as everything else was. And then by the time it did, start to sprout they were quite variable we also had cabbage root maggots so we lost a few as well so they've been through a few stresses and so some have gone to flower and i'd say i'm not 100 percent sure if these are exactly how they're meant to be because they've turned into many stems because they've kind of bolted a little bit um so that means just kind of making sure to snap off the very tip of the long stalks i think and just by tasting them that's where it's tender and then further down it's a bit woody um, but I'm pretty happy with them because like, this is one of my favorite types of broccoli um, mainly because you don't need to chop it up you just chuck it into something and it is very tasty I can say so I'd say pretty happy with this because we should get a few crops off of this one yeah the next thing will be to see if our members enjoy it Cabbages. 
cabbages at our farm actually always tend to be really good. We love cabbages. Not everyone loves cabbages, but we encourage people to love cabbages. And they've been very successful this year. So we've got red drumhead variety here, which interestingly seem to be the most resilient against the um, cabbage root fly and maggot top tip. But then we have a few other varieties we're growing this year. We're growing uh, golden acre and filterkraut as well. So that's along here. And we've got some Brussels sprouts growing here. These ones are the summer cabbages, which James just harvested for the box today. Good thing to note this year we're actually going to put black currants in the box, which worked out for the nettles, which we're very excited about because they're delicious and we've just never had the right vessel to put them in the box in. So we've got little punnets this year to put them in, so we're excited. We've got our kale here, again protected by the fine mesh because of the uh, cabbage root fly. These beds have recently been harvested. This one here with the blue hoops is our radish bed and we just sow that in thirds of a bed because there's no way we would ever harvest a full bed of radish for one box so we sow it in third increments. And this was a turnip bed and we've got one more turnip bed up here so I'll just show you. We've got our second turnip bed here. As you can see, we've got a few bolted ones. We've had real trouble with our turnip this year. Again, because of the really strange kind of cool temperatures and then it has got quite hot on certain days, it's caused a lot of our crops to bolt, including the turnips. This is our mixed salad. We do lots of plots of this. Um, again, you can see more bolting. We've got good kind of uh, demonstration of bolting plants at the moment. Um, but this is just one of the mixed varieties that we do. So we've stopped sowing this now because it seems to not deal very well with the hot temperatures. Most of the mustard greens aren't great in super hot temperatures anyway. Uh, this is the um, purple frills. But here we've got green in snow and a giant red mustard. And we have an area of baby leaf red Russian kale. And we'll be harvesting this tomorrow as part of our salad mix. We have our second of our kohlrabi beds. Uh, we've got a mix of Azure Star and Super Schmelz. Uh, very nice varieties, um, protected from the cabbage root maggot again. And then at the back here, we have our next succession of mixed uh, mustard leaf salad. This is our charred plot. Tomorrow morning, we'll be harvesting some chard for the veg boxes. We've had a few bolted ones again of these, but our loss is the goat's gain and they've been having those. We've still got plenty to be putting into bunches for everyone. One of my favorite things, it's very tasty. We've got our first succession of super schmelz. Um, you can see it just developing here, the kohlrabi. Um, quite an alien looking veg, kind of tastes like a calabrese stem, which is my favorite part of that kind of broccoli. So I think it's a really tasty vegetable. The broccoli apple, that's what I call it. This is our later succession of the monstrue that we're growing this year. This is the broad beans that we're growing and I was just harvesting them earlier today. That was our first harvest for this season and they're looking great. Where are we, Rosa? In the legume rotation, James. At the moment I'm picking some broad beans. Uh, these have always been a really good crop for our veg boxes. Uh, they're not everyone's favorite bean. I think they're actually really good and it's just about how you use them. It's quite a starchy bean, um, but very filling. This is our first succession of Monge 2. So these are a new variety for us this year. Um, I was gonna say mixed results, but it's not, it's not a great one, to be honest. We love Monge 2, they normally do really well. Um, we got very drawn in by the idea of a Monge 2 that also grew into a decent podding pea. 
Um, but what it turns out is that the Monge 2 is definitely not as sweet, basically, as the sweeter um, pure Monge 2 varieties that we normally grow. So it is purple and that is very cool and it makes your mouth blue, which is kind of fun. But actually it's a little bit of a tough pea and we're gonna leave these two rows mostly to become peas because in that way they're a lot sweeter when you pod them as peas. So that's our kind of damage control. Um, aside from that, they grew a lot taller than our normal varieties. So we had to support them as they blew over in the strong winds that we always get. Um, but on the plus side, they are producing a lot of peas. So we'll keep you posted on that. And last but not least, our runner beans. They're Scarlet Emperor. They've got these beautiful red flowers and they're actually doing really well now because we lost a whole load of them to uh, quite a late frost that we had towards the start of June. Um, so it's really great that they're surviving and climbing well up our, well, it's definitely the strongest structure that we've built to date for our runner beans. And so this should hopefully hold up in the really strong winds that we get. And we should get a decent crop off of these as well. I think that's it. And I didn't even finish my cider. <laughs> so that's good. That means I've been talking a lot. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. That was a rush. Speedy tour. Yeah, speedy tour. <laughs> we've still got a lot of things to prep for tomorrow. So we're trying yeah. to do this quickly. We also need to drink our cider and that's eat our dinner. Yep. Um, so well done you for getting <laughs> us around the garden. Um, thanks for watching folks, I hope you really enjoyed that. As always, it's really great to have your support, so please like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please tell your friends. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.